Welcome back. Prince Andrew's request uh, to dismiss a lawsuit filed against him in New York City in federal court has been denied by the judge. So that means the case is moving on forward. The prince can still try to get the, the case dismissed in other ways. Um, what should he do? Uh, what is next for him? What might his attorneys do? We want to discuss that now with our guests on the program. Still with me, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor and entertainment law attorney, Daryl Cohen, and jury consultant and human behavior expert, Susan Constantine. Okay, Daryl, if you were tasked with representing the prince, uh, what would you be thinking about doing this morning on his behalf, please? Three words, settle, settle, and finally the last one, settle. <laughs> If that doesn't work, <laughs> if that doesn't work, Julie, then what I would be doing is throwing out a great deal of discovery. I want to know mm -hmm. if there are any pictures available of how Virginia looked at the time these alleged assaults took place. And keep in mind, this took place in New York, so she wasn't taken to an island. She wasn't taken to a warm spot. It happened in New York at the mansion. The second thing I would do is try to find out this unknown other victim and who she was and take her deposition and find out her credibility. Because if she's there and she's credible, then she, as I mentioned earlier, she's going to bolster everything that Virginia's talking about. If she's not available as a defense lawyer, I would hit that and hit that hard in depositions, in discovery. And then when and if it goes to trial, that would be one of my main points. But I agree with Susan. And there are a lot of things that, are, that come to mind. Credibility. How does she look? And I don't like Zoom for several reasons, or Skype for that matter, because you don't see a person's real body language. You don't feel the energy or the lack of energy in a courtroom. And it's more difficult to see their facial expressions and how they act and react to questions and what's going on. That to me can be everything because that jury is watching everything that Prince Andrew does. And in this case, everything that Virginia does watching the body language as the trial progresses, if it gets that far. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm not saying that this is likely, but Let's just say, for the sake of our analysis right now, that this case keeps on moving. And let's say we get to the point where depositions are being taken. And so each side can have witnesses under oath swear to tell the truth, just like they would in a courtroom. There's a court reporter, and they can answer questions from the attorneys. There's cross-examination, all that. It's kind of like a loose courtroom setting. Think of it like that. Susan. Tell me, let's just say that we're proceeding to this point for the sake of this analysis here on the show today. If you're on Prince Andrew's defense team advising those lawyers, how do you help advise him in this situation if he's going to be deposed by Virginia Dufresne's attorneys? <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I would be prepared to having the attorneys ask questions both from the defense and from the prosecution side. So what we're looking for is how he's responding to those questions. And what we're talking about is there's his body language, like his facial expressions, his movements, his eye blinking, the, the language he uses, the words he uses, all of that is so important. Um, and I love this part of it because uh, this kind of gives you pretrial intelligence, gives you a snapshot of what it would look like when he, if he were ever to, to take the stand. I highly think he would, but um, if he were. We're, we're, we're looking to see how he's responding when he's under pressure. When, you know, we want to do, this is a high stake situation, right? So when a person is, is in a high stake situation, there is a, a thing that happens, which is called cognitive load. When you know the truth and then you try to tell the story differently, there will be these physiological responses you're going to see in his body language, his facial expressions, his rapid eye blinking, his voice intonation, all of that. Now, this is great because this pretrial intelligence gives us information on how we're going to proceed from this point forward. Not only that, I would be analyzing those deposition transcripts of how he actually answered them, and I would be doing voice stress analysis. 
I'd be taking those key points that he, uh, w when he was asked a specific probative question, and I'm going to analyze that so that I have insight so that I can then inform the attorneys of what to avoid and what, what, how to maybe rephrase that question that would not increase the cognitive load. Right, Susan. Uh, it's, it's all really, really fascinating, everything you were just saying. And as you were talking, we just learned some breaking news about Prince Andrew. Um, this just in, um, CNN is reporting this, that uh, the prince has just been stripped of his military titles and charities. Uh, this announcement, CNN says, is coming from Buckingham Palace. Uh, this announcement coming, of course, just one day after uh, we reported that the court in New York City um, has ruled um, against that motion to dismiss. Doesn't mean there can't be more motions to dismiss filed based on other issues, but on this one saying that that civil settlement agreement between Epstein and Jeffre protects the prince, uh, the court said, no way, Jose, that's not going to happen. Um, so now, uh, again, uh, the prince has just been stripped of his military titles and charities uh, because of this lawsuit that is pending. So this raises a really great question I have for you, please, Daryl, that I would love for you to speak on. Um, and this is something that I think is so important. Um, in, in our era of Me Too, where we're seeing accusers come forward, absolutely, we need to listen to accusers. However, an accusation does not need to vitiate the presumption of innocence in our country. It doesn't. The presumption of innocence stays with everyone um, who is accused of, of wrongdoing in the United States of America. And time and time again, we see as soon as an accusation comes out, we see suddenly someone loses their job, they, you know, their whole life is turned upside down before the chance um, has been had for the accusations to play out in a court of law. Here, again, we're not in criminal court on this, we're in civil court. But, um, Daryl, would you speak to that, please? Because you know what it's like to be a prosecuting attorney and to be a defense attorney and how accusations, if untrue, can ruin someone's life. Well, Julie, what this is all about is M and R. That's money and reputation. And once these allegations come out, whether they be true or false or somewhere in the middle, which oftentimes they are, the person who is accused is destroyed. And perhaps what's happening by the royal family, by Buckingham Palace, is they're trying to minimize the fallout, regardless of how this case falls out evidentiary wise. But the press especially since we have so much social media and no one can breathe without the whole world knowing that they're breathing incorrectly or correctly or they breathe one time too often. Everybody knows everybody's business and it's destroying us. So, I mean, that's about it. Mm -hmm. Daryl, thank you for that. One last thing, um, and we have to just leave the the discussion here for now. But one last thing I want to make very clear for anybody wondering. Yesterday's decision by the court was not at all on the merits or the facts of this case. And if you read the court order, uh, as I have, it, it makes very clear that this is only a consideration of the procedural issue. So the court only looked at that very vague language in that settlement agreement between Virginia Dufresne and Jeffrey Epstein and found that it does not somehow shield Prince Andrew from this civil lawsuit. So the court was not making a determination as to whether or not he's civilly liable, only that the case can keep on moving uh, through the docket. So I want to say a big thank you to Susan Constantine and Daryl Cohen for weighing in on this.